Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen and a Star Citizen Alpha 3.8.2 state of the game. The 3.8 branch of the game still has various issues and I want to discuss the playability of the current game, what there is to do and how far we have to go, I suppose to a some extent. Please bear in mind that we still have the game very much in its alpha stage, which is basically Star Citizen ticking off the minimum viable products of each mechanic at a very basic level. Beta in a few years is where we will see a lot of content filled out. However, Star Citizen does market itself with some polished elements and as a playable experience. So we sort of like need to take this into consideration as well. It is sort of a, an interesting, slightly odd, sometimes incompatible view in my opinion. But um, what can you currently do in Star Citizen? Well, there are various gameplay loops. You can spawn at one of the major locations now, one of your choice. There's very rich, beautiful environments and planets to have a look around. You can also buy and rent a large portion of the flyable ships in-game, but not all of them. And uh, the more expensive ones are actually going to require you to grind quite a long time. Before 3.8.2, some of the ships were very cost prohibitive because of this, but 3.8.2 does introduce long-term persistence, and this allows Alpha UEC and most purchases and gear and stuff that you purchase in-game to be carried on and persist between updates now rather than be deleted. This is a massive step towards a much more playable experience. However, the inconsistency is a little worrying if you're looking to amass wealth or uh, really, really grind to get something, because they did persist sort of some people's progress from 3.8.1. Some people got all of their progress carried across. Some people got some of it. Some people got none of it. And now we just don't know when there's going to be wipes. CIG is still going to do full wipes occasionally for testing purposes and all that sort of stuff. But we don't know when they're going to be. It might not be that we get any more wipes this year. Um, might, we might have loads. So that's a little annoying. There is a character reset tool as well now that you can wipe your progress if you want to or need to as well. Also with ship purchases and rentals, there are ships, especially the new ones, that they add to the game that are not currently available to purchase or rent yet anyway, uh, which is not ideal. I want to be able to purchase the Garrick King game, for example. Um, I, I don't necessarily because I already have a Garrick, but do you see what I mean? Like there's uh, ships that you can only use in-game if you actually have purchased them with real money at the moment. Um, obviously, they are going to be available in-game to purchase at some point, probably in the near future for a lot of them, but they do sort of like artificially restrict that stuff, I suspect, to encourage people to potentially buy the, the ships, uh, encourage sales maybe, give a bit of exclusivity to them, and they don't want to make the ships that people buy incredibly easy to obtain in game immediately as the, the patch goes live because otherwise people will be like, well, why did I buy this? Well, at least some people. So that, that's an interesting one. I do want everything available in game as soon as possible though. There is a lot of weapons, ships and equipment though in game now, clothing and armor too, though there's no real incentive to wear clothing yet. You might as well stay in your armor. Lots of interesting FPS weapons and uh, gear for your ships, weapons for your ships. Um, lots of different um, systems to buy that will affect uh, the way your ships fly and play. There's a few gameplay loops and missions with a little bit of variance in each category but they do sort of like follow the same basic formula and are all sort of like part of the same basic pie. Delivery missions will take you around the verse and have you taking items from one place to another for a reward. You can do free roaming trade yourself as well if you've got an appropriate cargo bay or a mixture of the two at the same time. Trading is not as fun as when we had jump down as our hot zone and the sort of like risk reward for trading isn't really there, nor is the sort of like potential amount of money that you can make from doing it in the same way that there was with sort of Jump Town. Um, you need to be scared of potential server crashes as well. That could literally cause you to lose all of your cargo and potentially all of the money that you've amassed. CIG are certainly looking at recapturing that gameplay and a lot more in the future though. They do want that sort of emergent gameplay. They do want moving dynamic sort of economies and um, sort of like trades moving around the verse and lots more going on. There are some more legal cargo based missions as well that are a bit more risky sort of carrying certain commodities at the moment um, can get you fines or uh, a criminal rating uh, in certain areas and then they will also be confiscated if you're stopped by security and scanned so there is a risk there and that's quite interesting there are basic combat and bounty hunting missions clear out enemies of an area both in um, ship and fps style there's uh, sort of like more investigate try and find things missions um, most missions are sort of variations of all of those though though 
There are a couple more unique ones there, but they're the same as we've always had. Mining by hand with a mining tool or in a ship like the Prospector or Mole, or, although the Mole is often broken, that's still pretty solid as a loop. I really like mining. Yeah, it's got some broken bits, but it's, uh, it's an interesting gameplay loop. And um, although it's got problems and bugs and stuff still, it's, it actually bodes pretty well for the future, having at alpha stage quite developed gameplay mechanics. Sandbox and exploration gameplay is solid and um, if you've got a sort of like a goal in mind, if you've got a group or you want to like join an event, then you can really, really, really have that enjoyment factor. Organizations sort of organize their own events, there are races, battle royales, boarding actions, destruction derbies, pub crawls, socials, all set up by other players and Star Citizen in its current state is great for this. I have said it before and I'll say it again. As it stands, it's very much a tourist attraction 3.8.2 and Star Citizen in general at this stage. Come and check it out every so often. Look at its pretty new planets, its new ships and new content. Go, ooh, wow. Uh, and then go, well, I'm going to play something else that's actually got proper progression is a fully developed game. Star Citizen is not a fully developed game by any means yet. It is very much a shopping list of things for lots of different recipes and meals that have yet to be put together properly. The 3.8.2 patch also added the Carrack. Now, I really, really like the Carrack. It's probably my favourite ship in game, minus a couple of issues that it has. Um, you can get stuck in its beds and stations, though if you are stuck, you can press Shift and U or Y. Hopefully that um, will get you out of that station that you are stuck in. Also, the ship does not behave properly when landing sometimes, especially on non-flat terrain. Uh, and when spawned, especially in uh, at a hangar, the ship is very like jumpy and uncooperative. I do love the ship, though. Like when it's got actual exploration gameplay and we've got drones and uh, a load more of the, the sort of like uses for the ship, I, I suspect it's going to be a really really popular it's very pretty looking love what they've done with it so what's sort of broken or bad at the moment so the game is very much still an alpha so various features are bare bones or not working and core parts of the game are not there yet sort of like the flight model it's a spaceship game that needs a lot more work um atmospheric flight is still lacking uh, there are lots of updates to this coming over 2020 though we need better huds we need better um mechanics for pretty much everything the the the, the, the game is very much sort of like bare bones with a load of its implementations. Uh, combat and dogfighting, that's not balanced. There's still a load of features that we need, like physicalized components and better network code. Um, this is compounded by bugs like shield holes, uh, making some ships just dead meat. And you can't really have proper competitive play like we've had in the past with Star Citizen. It just isn't viable with desync problems and uh, netcode problems. AI in, of the NPCs and sort of ships is mega derp at the moment. That said, ships are at least active for the most part and engaging, but they sometimes still go AFK. FPS AI often are just trash, though again they are moving for some major updates to AI this year, actually getting them in a very playable state it looks like. The netcode and low server sort of player caps for servers um, hamper some of the enjoyment of the game. Desync being the um, most annoying thing here, that needs to be addressed for 3.9. There is a lack of gameplay loops and many bugs and accessibility issues for some of the missions. However, most of the missions are pretty accessible now um, that are in-game. Problems with some elevators and some trains preventing you from moving around the verse. There are still issues with servicing your ship at landing pads. You have to hover above them. Repairs can fail as well. You have to do services individually. There are more edge cases with ships um, not being uh, spawnable or uh, reclaimable properly and you have to like re-log and spawn back in and stuff and faff around. Objects still fall through the floor um, and that can be infuriating with mission items there are still bugs with ship rentals the economy in the game is very weak currently we need we need some economy stimulation and some good emergent gameplay from that so what's good well stability is actually pretty good for me at least client side incredibly stable though the occasional server crash is still devastating to traders I would say. I, I, I'm sure some people get lots of 30k issues. Uh, I don't so much. The gameplay area is massive with great looking ships, planets, points of interest, caves. And I mean, you can sort of like just fly around planets and space for hundreds of hours just looking at pretty things if that's your thing. If you want to go space trucking, if you just want to go exploring, there's a load to see in the game. And there's a lot of little Easter eggs and there are some, some very interesting missions. However, the missions that you do have in-game, after a while, you're going to get a bit bored because that's more of the same. Um, they do have variants in where they are and that sort of stuff, but they are pretty much the same loops. Mining's an interesting one, though bits of it are broken, especially with the mole at the moment. Mining 
has at least a, a good amount of polish to it as a gameplay loop for an alpha stage, and it bodes well for other gameplay loops in the future. Really interested uh, in, in mining as well, like I, I, I really enjoy mining. Yeah, yeah, obviously bug fixes and stuff like that stuff breaks occasionally. Uh, many beds allow you to set your spawn point in your ships that you have them, the 890 Jump, the Carrack, and the Cutlass Red are the only ships at the moment, but that allows you to do a lot more in the game, and oh no, I've died, oh, I spawned back in my ship. Fantastic. Star Citizen is a little erratic in its development, or at least some of its releases and focuses of those patches, but it's making very good progress now, ticking off alpha features from a list. There is certainly a juxtaposition uh, with some of the features that get focus and polish and others getting the bare minimum amount of work and left in a bad state. And that said, that's more than I'd expect from alpha. Having some of these features get a focus and a bit of a polish is, is odd at this alpha stage, but it's sort of like this weird way that CIG are developing their game. Obviously very popular, and I do love the fact I can play Star Citizen now, admittedly, and I think a lot of people um, are, are with me on that. Star Citizen is still in the camp of if you want to get involved in the game's development and give feedback, have your voice heard, play something that's very experimental and very cool in some areas, um, or if you've got a sort of like a group that plans or messing around regularly, organizing events, um, you can play with them socially. Then, if, if it's any of those reasons, then Star Citizen is currently an amazing experience. I love the project. I love getting involved with it. I love playing around with it. Uh, I love jumping in as a tourist. Yeah, and, and you can still do that even if you're not really into the project. You can jump in as a tourist with each major patch for a couple of dozen hours and just look at the new features and go, oh, wow, oh, that's cool, oh, that's cool. But playing it for long periods of time, or trying to, I suppose what I mean by that is, trying to play the game like it's a fully released game is not appropriate at the moment. It's frustrating at the very least. Although, I suppose some people probably actually quite enjoy the, the more basic grind and just sort of like learning Star Citizen. And um, as I said earlier, you can spend hundreds of hours just looking at the pretty stuff. So if you're playing the game and looking at the pretty stuff at the same time, yeah, you can certainly be wowed. Um, very often, actually, I'm still wowed by some sort of like sunsets and the way the sort of like, I can chase the sun on some of the moons. But those bugs and problems are certainly going to make it prohibitive to some players, frustrating to many. I love Star Citizen and play it regularly, not even when I'm just like filming, not for my channel or anything, but just for my myself. But I still get extreme frustration and often rage quit if I'm getting unlucky with bugs uh, for a long period of time. The Carrick is really good fun though, and 3.8.2 is much better than the rest of 3.8's branch. 3.9 does need to address some of these major issues if it's looking to be more playable though. And that's the thing. Star Citizen is making a load of progress. It is ticking stuff off its list of alpha, but it also needs to sort of be playable because that's how CIG are marketing it. I'm interested to know what you think and what your experiences of 3.8.2 are. I've absolutely loved my experiences with it, but it's still not a, a proper playable game yet uh, by any means. 3.9, um, do you think that's going to address a load of these problems or do you think it's going to be more of the same? Do you think we're going to have a, a lot more problems with the new content uh, and updates coming? Do you think um, some of the improvements that they have got planned for server-side object container streaming are going to be here uh, and potentially give us more stable sort of like servers, a better performance um, and fix a load of those bugs with AI and that sort of stuff? Or do you think it's going to be a good few more quarters before we have a more playable experience the Star Citizen. Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Every month we have a ship giveaway for Star Citizen. This month we are giving away an Anvil Arrow Light Fighter and game package with that so you can have access to Star Citizen if you don't already. All you've got to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of my videos made during the month of March. There are full details in the description below. I am a shill for a couple of companies, NordVPN and NordPass. If you are looking for a VPN or or a password management system, I recommend you check them out. They've got many benefits over free services, and as I'm pretty security conscious, uh, I love those kind of services. Also, there's Shadow. If you are thinking about getting a new gaming rig or upgrading your gaming PC for Star Citizen or whatever, then consider Shadow instead. It is an internet cloud-based subscription service like Stadia, like GeForce Now, but this one gives you access to a full Windows 10 environment that's fully customizable and that is significantly better in my opinion, allowing you to do a lot more with it. Check out the links below for them or use the code 
Board Gamer for discount. Also, if you wish to support the channel further, there is Patreon. There's the YouTube Join member button down below. That really helps. This is a community-supported channel, and I wouldn't be able to do what I do without the support that I get. If you want to share these videos, if you want to comment, give feedback, whatever, that is also in hugely appreciated. Thanks very much for watching, guys. You take care, and I'll see you in the verse.